Have you ever had relations with a couch? Or at least parts of a couch? No comment. I mean, is there anything a teenage boy won't hump besides his mom? No comment. Josh! Hey, welcome back to our Twitter Rex. I'm Corbin. I'm Rick. You can follow us on Instagram, Twitter for more juicy content. Thank you to every sports on Patreon. Follow us through the account. Subscribe, like, button. Let's couch that idea. Uh, uh. <laughs> wow. <laughs> uh, so this is a... Uh, Big difference between doing it on a couch versus doing it with a couch. Prove Am it. I right? Prove it. Today we got a video. This is a video that came out uh, about 11 days ago, and it's from a, a channel called AV TV. And it, she is like a, uh, like a, one will say, um, word, granular uh, essay, kind of like a, oh. a big essay kind of thing. Uh, what is it? What is it called? <laughs> a video essay, maybe? Uh, Sorry, you said essay and I was suddenly in Pacoima. Oh, wow. Uh, I studied 125 Bollywood film finances and here's the weird truth. So she kind of actually studied the finances of 125 Bollywood films. So she basically goes over like, um, um, Bollywood movies and what the issue currently is in terms okay. of why they aren't making certain types of films. Okay. And, and the, the from the a financial perspective. Financial per okay, perspective. Cool. And All so right. I think it'll be interesting, especially because I don't, I don't know if she's Indian or not. Um, so that'll be interesting. If maybe she is, I don't know. Um, this video is a deep dive into Bollywood industry, exploring how it grows despite economic challenges and Indians' deep rooted cultural significance. Discover how the lipstick effect keeps entertainment thriving through times and why human uh, quest for stories is timeless. Uh, backed by the Lindy effect. I don't know what that is. You know what the Lindy effect is? Well, it's when you do the Lindy and other people are affected by it. Um, here we go. Wow. I think? thought there'd be more information, Wait. particularly about the finances, but I could see her point. I see, I, and I don't disagree. Here in 2008, when the world was going through the biggest financial crisis since the Great Depression, surprisingly, Movie theaters were still packed and lipstick sales were still going up. Now, what's the correlation between all of these? I don't know. A rather important one. It's something called the lipstick effect, which is basically a retail and economic theory which states that when an economy is going through a recession and consumers don't have enough cash to make any large purchases, they still end up spending on smaller items which give them that dopamine hit. For example, going out for a movie or buying a lipstick. It's basically to give people a semblance of normalcy during hard times. So if you think about it, the entertainment industry or Bollywood is actually recession proof. In fact, this made me realize something a little more profound. So a few years ago, I had visited Greece and got to see the Theatre of Dionysus, which is basically a 2,600 years old Greek theatre in Athens. It's supposed to be the first theatre ever constructed, built in 6th century BC. Nice. It was an absolute spectacle. Now, I remember standing there and thinking that this human quest for entertainment, for stories, for escape, it's not just old, it's literally ancient, it's fundamental to who we are as a species. Amen, sister. Preach. <laughs> and you know when something has existed for so long, chances are it's going to stick around. There's actually a name for this as well. It's called the Lindy effect. Okay. It's the idea that the longer something non-perishable has been around, the longer it's likely to be around in the future. So books, technologies, ideas, and yes, forms of entertainment. Now this led me to my second thesis around Bollywood that an industry which solves such an innate human desire 
I don't think it's going to perish anytime soon. But then, what is all this speculation about it losing relevance? Because we all have to agree that there has definitely been a massive shift in the industry post pandemic. So, as always, I decided to dig deep to really understand what's going on here. More than the rise of South Indian cinema, OTT, democratization of content, that is, anyone and everybody can become a content creator now and entertain you. I feel like there's a fundamental problem with Bollywood unit economics which isn't making sense anymore. The value chain of the business is broken. So I looked at all the financials of the recent movies and I was like, we need to show you guys this. So here I am. Okay, here's a little experiment. I'm going to show you guys the budgets of all the recent films and I want you guys to predict how much they actually made on the box office. Any guesses? Not a lot. As you can see, and the I numbers are not about this of converting flops lately. Lit. But this is not even the interesting part. What actually caught my attention was these massive budgets. That's when I started questioning, is this how much it costs to create a movie? I mean, does it truly cost 700 crores to create a movie like this? When this film, by the way, which won the Oscars for its visual effects, yeah. was created with just 135 crores. Yeah, Godzilla minus one, great film. See, at some point, even at AOS, we would like to create films. Films for you guys, which we can actually put out on YouTube. So, I wanted to understand the whole business model further. So, I dug deeper to learn about how movies are funded, mm -hmm. how they make revenue, and how it's actually evolved through the years. So, you see, most people think that a producer invests his money in films, but unless it's a big production company like Dharma or Yashraj, most producers get money for their film from banks, financial institutions or corporate entities. Yep. But I also found out something very intriguing here. You Trying know, the biggest source of funding for Bollywood films exchange. before the 2000s was actually the underworld. Let's go yep. back in time a little. So before 2001, Underworld Bollywood involved, did not yeah, have the Hollywood status too. of an industry. So this lack of recognition meant filmmakers and producers could not secure loans from banks or financial institutions. So as a result of this, many of them turned to the underworld for funding. Now this wow. illicit connection provided the necessary capital to produce films, but also brought a host of problems, including the influence of criminal elements in the industry. You know, back then they could not raise ticket prices even if the film had a huge start. Special permission from the charity commissioner was required and oh, even wow. then the theatre owners had to pay 50% of the ticket price as the entertainment tax. Oh, wow. But in 2001, Bollywood finally received industry status and everything changed. Out went the underworld and in came the corporates. In 2001, so this entry of corporates literally late. transformed the industry by bringing in professional management, structured financing and marketing strategies. This era saw the introduction of new revenue streams such as satellite rides and multiplexes which basically diversified income sources beyond just box office collections. As of today, here are all the revenue streams for a Bollywood film. Yeah, there's a lot. Music rights is a big one. Now this was all great, but this is also where the problem starts. Now these corporates also brought one more thing with them that was fat paychecks for actors. According to producer Ratanjan, it was after the introduction of the corporates that stars like Shah Rukh Khan, Salman Khan and Akshay Kumar started charging high fees for their films. See, at least back then, while corporates hiked their fees, actors still had to prove their worth at the box office. But if you look at the correlation between box office performance and actor fees today, the numbers are absolutely bonkers and it just doesn't make sense anymore. Let me give you some examples. Let's look at Akshay Kumar and Tiger Shroff's Bade Mia Chote Mia, a movie that was so bad that it not only got thrashed by the audience and the critics, but was also a big financial disaster. And while the producer lost most of the money, the film's leading stars took home a combined of 140 crores as fees. This is literally 40% of the film's budget. Even the leading actors of Fighter, the second highest grossing Bollywood film this year, got a combined of 120 crores, which is again about 48% of the film's budget. Honestly, the examples are endless. Even a small film like Merry Christmas had the bulk of its budget going to actors as fees. The film itself did not even manage to recover the actors' fees, but this trend has become so big in Bollywood that producers are literally not able to make films now. And this is what I meant when I said that the unit economics of Bollywood just don't make sense anymore. Karan Johar even went so far as to say this in an interview. Those movie stars that are asking for 35 crores are opening to 3.5 crores. How does how is that math working? I guess when and if we actually end up making a film, you guys will end up seeing our faces only because these actor fees is not making any sense to me.
putting the master class link in description see you there, there now i also wanted to understand this further that what is actually causing this do these actors just code these random numbers and the producers have no choice but to pay because this is literally putting a whole industry in jeopardy so we actually found three main culprits that I'll break down for you. First, let's look at the OTT platforms. So you see the impact of Netflix, Amazon Prime and other OTT platforms on reducing footfalls in theatres has become a common debate across the world. We ourselves talked about it in our previous video on Bollywood. In fact, according to a recent survey by Ormax, even though footfalls in theatres have increased from last year, they are still below the pre-pandemic levels. Now, even though OTTs have impacted theatre footfalls, like we said earlier, they also opened up a new revenue stream for producers, or should I rather call it a shield, especially for the big budget mediocre films. Why do I say this? Take a look at this. See, for a big budget Hindi film, which basically means a film with a budget of 200 crores, the OTT platforms pay 100 crores. That's literally half of the film budget. Combine this with satellite and music rights and you've got a guaranteed hit even before the film releases or bombs at the box office. Now, on one side, this was pretty helpful for producers during the pandemic. For example, for films like Sadak 2, Bhuj and Lakshmi, where you might have not even seen or heard of the films, they were sold for hundreds of crores to OTT platforms. Had these films been released in theatres directly, they would not even earn half of what they earn through OTTs. Because honestly, just look at the IMDb ratings, Sadak 2 is the lowest rated Bollywood film. Now, these ratings are important because according to a statistical exercise, an extra one point rating on IMDb leads to 17 more crore at the box office. Now, this trend of OTTs paying huge prices for bad films did not end during the pandemic. Karthik Aryan's Shehzada, for example, was acquired for 40 crore by Netflix, which helped it recover more than 76% of its cost. But if you look at the box office, guess how much it made at the box office? Just 32 crores. If you compare this to the original movie, which it was a remake of, had earned 280 crores. Now you see, because OTT is kept paying big amounts even for bad films, the producers kept giving in to actors' demands for higher pay. I was reading a book, Bollywood Box Office and Beyond, The Evolving Business of Indian Cinema, by this author and film journalist called Lata Jha, where she mentioned that if the Bollywood business really wants to create value addition for everybody, the demand and supply side needs to be fenced off from each other. Basically, financial dealings of producers producers needs to be separated from the demand for high-cost stars. We really need more good talent in Bollywood instead of depending on the same A-listers who charge these exorbitant amounts again and again and more investment needs to go into production quality, things that actually improve the quality of films if we want any value addition. But I feel like the pressure on these production houses and studios to provide a hit is so much that they're also trapped. And as we read more into it, we realize that they themselves are making the problem worse through all sorts of shady practices. One which we found was corporate bookings. Now you must be like, what does corporate bookings have to do with this? Hear me out. So corporate bookings are basically companies buying more movie tickets for their employees. Hmm. Now this was a normal thing for a long time, but according to trade analysts, in the last few years, corporate bookings have actually become a tool not for entertaining employees, but for manipulating box office numbers. In fact, last year, Karan Johar and producers of Prabhas's Salar were accused of making corporate bookings to boost their film's box office performance. A trade analyst even declared that Animal was the only film in 2023 which did not do any corporate bookings to boost its box office revenue. And you know what? This is not a hidden practice anymore. Even the audience now knows when a film has engaged in corporate booking. Just take a look at these tweets. Countless people have shared photos photos and videos of empty shows of films that were sold out on Big My Show. Why are film producers resorting to this? Well, the answer is simple, to create hype. You see, if the opening day collections of a film are high, it creates a perception that the film is good and people are going to theatres to watch the film. And this benefits both the producers and the actors. You see, big box office collections help a producer sell his or her film to streaming platforms for a high price. The actor, on the other hand, can show that he or she is a bankable star and can continue to demand that high fees for the next film, saying, see, I sold out seats, hence pay me XYZ amount. Now, it doesn't end here there's one more final culprit behind actors inflating their prices that's paid reviews and social media influencers. See, publicity is not a bad thing at all. Brands, athletes and even entrepreneurs need it to stay relevant in the eyes of the public. And it's especially important for celebrities because after all, they are in the game of grabbing attention. But in the race to create a favourable perception, Bollywood is becoming 
too desperate. According to a report by the Indian Express, actors and producers are paying lakhs of rupees to buy favorable reviews, plant fake crowds at events, and capture fake interactions with fans to hype their films and themselves. And this is not something new. Two years ago, in an interview with film critic Anupama Chopra, Karan Johar said that the actors were using fake PR-generated hype to increase their fees as well. In fact, in an article this year, Anupama Chopra also addressed this problem further. She mentioned that by resorting to such practices, Bollywood is literally pushing itself into a credibility crisis which will impact its storytelling and creativity in the long run. Which is apparent now because instead of creating better movies, Bollywood is literally spending on everything else. See, if you think about it, at the root of it all, good movies essentially stem from good stories, good script. So if there was some substantial investment going there, In the we writers, might actually yep. have been able to see good box office hits. But you know what I found? That leave investment, most of the writers who are supposed to be writing these scripts are not even getting paid or not even getting any credit for the work that they do in films. The screenwriter who spoke to Indian Express said that she was not given her full salary for a film she wrote, while the costume designer got paid 16 lakhs just for a day's work. Why is there so much discrepancy? Well, the answer is sketchy contracts. According to a senior well, member a of the Screenwriters Association, Correct. producers don't pay writers for reworking drafts and reserve if you had, the rights If you had unions for your for artists, a lot of this stuff would Some stop. Some contracts yep. even ban the writers from approaching the union even if they have a dispute with the producers. Many writers have often come out and asked for a change in this. Last year, the Screenwriters Association said that they are working on a proposal to get writers a minimum of 12 lakh, but so far, no change has taken place. Now, if you think about it, the writers who are actually the creators of the film are not getting any fair incentives. How will they tell fresh and better stories? There's literally no creativity in Bollywood anymore. If something works, it's repeated again and again and again. Karan Johar and Nawazuddin Siddiqui very rightly said this in an interview as well. There's a big film hit in Bollywood. See, as we can see, there are a lot of issues, a lot of things that need to be solved. But I don't think this means that Bollywood will die. What it does mean though, is that Bollywood as an industry needs to adapt and the answer lies here itself, not in the West, not in Hollywood. You know, this year when a lot of big budgeted movie fails, small movies which no one expected to do well turned out to be surprise hits. A common pattern among all these films was that neither were the remakes nor were they marketed like crazy. One of the biggest lessons comes from Malayalam cinema. Some of my favorite films that I've truly enjoyed this year have been Malayalam. A common denominator among all of them was impeccable storytelling. Yep. You know, in terms of box office as well, Malayalam films have crossed over 700 crores at the box office so far, which is a lot more than what Malayalam cinema earned last year. Most of these films also had way less budget than some of the Bollywood films, proving that good storytelling does not require big stars and budgets. Now to conclude, whether Bollywood will learn from success of Malayalam films or small films, only the future will tell. But filmmaking, all in all, is a tricky process and with the audience being so heterogeneous in India, it's going to be a tough problem to crack. Not impossible though. I think everybody has to play a part from producers, the pricey actors, and even us as an audience. And that is all for today's video. My name is Achina Maya. Please don't forget to hit the subscribe button. See you in the next video. Very, nice. in, very uh, informative. Very, yeah. A lot of a uh, lot of points I've heard before about uh, what other people have said um, about certain issues. With specifically, it's not the not just them, but I, I hear it a lot about the Hindi industry specifically. Is um, a lot of the stuff they've mentioned of um, really high prices compared to the budget, and I, I would love to know the the correlation between Hollywood and like we it used to be a big thing like in the early 2000s Tom Cruise Will Smith Johnny Depp we're all making 20 mil but I think the budgets of those are at least 200 to 300 million yeah and so the but that take that was not taking up 40 percent right and I bet a lot of times a lot of those were on the end of, yeah uh, on the back end because that's where a lot of them will make their money right um so i i can't imagine you know when johnny was making 20 mil of a film for pirates i, I imagine those films costed at least two to three hundred million dollars yeah and i heard for example rdj's compensation package is approximately 80 million with a some percentage of back end but when you consider the expectation they have mm. is going to be one billion on the theatrical run 
of each film, and that's between two films. Yeah, okay. that's between two films. So split that, but it's forty million per film. Yeah. If you're looking at one billion in profits, he's not asking for a lot comparatively. When the fact of the draw has to do with the name, and a lot of the time, names are a draw. And Robert, that is an outlier. I think now, right? Is, is Robert right. Downey Jr. <laughs> that's the he, that's, he's Robert he's, that's a unicorn. Jr. He in created the Marvel. Marvel. <laughs> he, he, he's, that's a unicorn. So, like, I don't think anybody else is really making no. that. And Tom Cruise, like, even when Tom Cruise did Top Gun, which are widely successful, he's the producer. He's the that. producer of the and film. And so he's like, I'm basically going to take the thing I don't. The, the thing end. I don't... There's a lot of things I don't understand. Uh, how do theater owners not have the legal recourse to sue production houses that book their theaters without having a single human sit their butt in the seat? Because they get the money, I guess. Oh, they I, don't get... Ha they want... They want concessions. That's why they have intervals. Well, I don't know how the... Um, Unless they're also getting paid yeah. by them in addition to the seats, they're also getting paid under the table. I imagine. To be quiet. There's a lot of that. Yeah. Uh, and I know, because obviously with that, corporate bookings, I, I do hear about those a lot. And they, <laughs> since they've done it, they get accused of it a lot of times, even when they're not doing it as well. And so like they... Um, or buying paid reviews... Um, so you'll pay somebody to give you a positive review. I hate that. Yeah. If you're if you're paying people to review your film or if you're accepting payment, shame on you for not giving a crap about art and only caring about being a, a lying sack of crap. Yeah. Uh, we I mean that from I, the bottom of my heart. Uh, <laughs> we get accused of being paid all the time. And I've said it many times. I've actually never been offered. Uh, Thankfully, yet, uh, so because I get a lot of emails of. If you uh, do, uh, we're gonna where if you if if I find out you've offered to pay us something, we're gonna talk. I will talk about it publicly. That's different than would you like to come see our film? Correct. But they don't say for a positive review. <laughs> never. That's never happened yet. No. <laughs> and it's <laughs> maybe, why maybe it's just for Indian reviewers well, that they know that will do. And it. it's why we get. I mean, we don't talk about it. I've gotten many as of you personal messages from filmmakers who when we give a good review thank us because they know we're only saying it because we mean it yeah um and then there's what, 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 one other um well it's obvious you got to pay you got you got to have good writers oh yeah that's that's first and foremost it's storytelling and you can tell it from this year actually end of last year to 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 this year with 12 fail did very, very well and beloved and Lapita Ladies. Which, great stories. Great stories. Very small budget with a great story and made its money back, I think, by a lot. The first thing you need above all else, because she said it at the beginning. I mean, if the, one of the oldest, if not the oldest archaeological findings is prostitution. That's it. Oh. Is a art, artifact. It, it has to do with Osiris and it's a passion play. It's one of the oldest things ever found in antiquity, archaeologically, and it's a play. It's a story. Theater is storytelling, whether mm -hmm. it's a movie theater or a live theater. It's storytelling at its core, so you need storytellers. The first person in line is the writer. Oh, yeah. You don't have stories unless someone writes it. The next person in line... For film. Uh, well, yeah, for, for all. I think okay. for both live theater and for, for, for film are the people who will inhabit the characters of that story. That's the actors. Well, for film, I think it would be the director. So. No, because the director won't have a film without actors. But you, it's a, I'm talking... They have the, the control. But, yeah, film specifically. At theater, 100%, you're right. Even though they're all important. I'm not saying the actors aren't important, but in film specifically, it's such a director's medium. I it think is. He, they have he the control. Be, in, in my opinion, the writers, followed by the director... Then everybody. Uh, else. When it comes to power structure, I agree. But when it comes to creative output, I disagree. Mm, yeah. Okay. Because I disagree. A, a good director can't make a bad actor good, and a good director can't have a film without actors. Period. It's why when we went on strike, the industry shut down. Mm. You, you don't have a movie without actors. So, but I think who's a director going to direct without actors? Well, that's because we have a union. In, no, I know, that's, but that's, that's very, my point. A very important factor in this yeah. is also unions. So you are, need are writers. Fantastic. Actors, directors, and crew. And they're all important. They all play a part. And at the end of the day, you can't make it without any of them. But first in line, you should be having 
good storytellers writing good stories rather than rehashing old ones or literally copying frame for frame other films. Yeah. I think the, the remakes is definitely a big issue for, for the Hindi industry right now because they've done it for so long. Well, and they're not paying writers to yeah. do their jobs. It's, it's It was such a thing for so long that worked for them yeah. for many years of like, oh, nobody in the Hindi industry saw this South film because OTTs weren't a thing. Right. And so they just remade it. And obviously right. other industries have done that as well. But um, obviously Bollywood being the big giant, right. it's going to get the most critique. And, and, the first, and they're still doing it a lot. Something that comes to mind for me which is why, if you haven't seen it, and why so many people jumped on a bandwagon that I thought was ridiculous. Mm. One of the reasons Lal Singh Chada works is not because it's a remake, and that's what people were thinking. It's just, ah, it's just a rehash. Atul wrote a pretty amazing script when you consider the fact he took an iconic, definitively American film. And made it Indian. And made it an Indian film. The amount of changes, and he did it in two weeks. It was the writing. Yep. So, yeah, and and that, I mean, there's there are people in the positions of power who can make these changes. The other thing that really concerns me, mm. I don't know if it was 2001, but I have heard through various sundry murmurings in different places. Murmurings, huh? Yeah, of the mob being connected to filmmaking still. Still? Still. Yeah, maybe it's very possible. Yeah, not, not in its totality, but to a dimension that should cause people concern. Yeah. Uh, at, at certain levels. Yeah. At certain levels. Um, you never want that. No. Um, granted. Criminality and artistry should never go. Well, criminality and anything should never go together. Granted, obviously, um, there's anytime there's people of power with money, there's always going to be corruption. Unfortunately. Oh, yeah. Um, very famously, Harvey Weinstein here. Um, uh, the massive monster that he is. Yeah. The most powerful man in Hollywood for Everybody decades. turned their back on him. Uh, Not everybody, but most everybody. Yeah. Um, for decades. Uh, and was doing monstrous, awful things. Yeah. Um, and so I, I, I have no doubt, really, that there's probably underworld, mob, whatever you want to call it still happening today um especially with a an industry and this goes not only just for bollywood for all industries that don't have a union um awful stuff happening with, yeah with that kind of it's, stuff. well you're right it's wherever there's power whenever and, and there's money, money yep. it's going to attract not nice <laughs> entities yeah that's going to happen especially when there's not rules yeah and, around and, and all of here too yeah oh, hollywood's not exempt oh no not at all uh, <laughs> or uh, sports for that matter no uh, yeah, look at the uh, look at the uh, FIFA. I mean, FIFA. I mean, just, uh, just I don't know if you heard about this recently, but down at Comic Con this year, massive sex trafficking bust, yep. just like they do at the Super Bowl, because wherever there's money and power, there's going to be corruption. Yep. Yeah. Awful. But that was really Interesting informative. Video. Yeah, very yeah. great job by uh, the channel. Um, very informative. Really different take than obviously we usually like to get into. Um, cause it, it did handle a lot of the financial parts of it. And we just usually like to talk about the film and, and whether we think it was good or not. And partly because we'll talk about finances on films in Hollywood because we know how that works a yeah. lot better than we do. We really don't understand. We can't even differentiate hear, core from the dollar yeah, yet. We hear a lot of this kind of stuff, like big actor fees and, um, and I, that one I struggle with because. Not fully. I, I fully, I, I do understand. Obviously, if you're taking up 40 or 50% of the budget, I think that's kind of crazy. Because um, as opposed to like here, like what I said, if if Johnny back in the day made $20 million on a $300 million, that was because he, the draw he brought. And it's taking up what, I don't know what the percentage of 20 mil of 300 million is, but it's not anywhere near 40 percent oh no of the budget no uh, no no so you definitely t 20 mil of 300 mil is like five percent yeah so definitely eight percent if you're taking up that much of it even though for india it's so different because they're still kind of and they're getting away from it on the star system a lot of people will go see a movie because it's shah Rukh khan coming back after five years right right um, or and they won't care about story. That's one of the reasons I don't like the deification of a celebrity is because yeah. everybody will say it's a great film just because they're in it, and no one will think about story. Yeah. Um, granted, if that's the story, trying like in in Rajnikanth film, like like the uh, the ones that that, that we we enjoy. Um, if they're don't the they have a good story. The, basically, the point of them is to celebrate this person. 
still the rest of it i agree with i'm not saying i, d I d disagree yeah but the the fact that india is on still a star system not as much as they used to be no but yeah, I, and they i are. think that's one of the things a lot of people want to transition and they want the actors to transition that's what like uh for the longest time here Big stars would never do a series after they've become a movie no, star. Ever. Ever. And now everybody's doing it because yes. the stories are great. And exactly. This is, like Leonardo, I feel I feel like Leo, even though, you know, he doesn't need my opinion on his career, I think he should do a series. I think he would like do an HBO series. That would be fucking balls to the wall. Awesome. Um, or like every star is doing it now. And you can, I mean, there's money there now too. So they can ask what they want to ask for. But you're going to get a good story and people want to see you there. People just want, they want to see their stars, but also want stars with good stories. It's good stories. Um, it always comes back to that. It, it comes back to good stories. Writing is the most important part of yeah. any, any uh, at least, artistic medium. Yeah. Um, I, I actually, I don't know about any artistic medium. Dance, but that, does that start well, with choreo the Yeah, I start, consider choreography coach, being writing. Story? You do? Okay. Yeah. Um, it's it's the person who has the idea and turns it into a material reality. Yeah. The composer. Okay. Whether it's music, whether it's dance, whether it's screenplay. Painting though? Yeah. That came from whether that, it's so, really? so you have a blank canvas. Someone is going to be the composer of whatever appears on that canvas. So you'd consider painting basically the writer. The writer. The painter is the author of the art of of that art form. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Where it's different. That's why in in song. I'm more interested in necessarily who wrote the song versus who just performed it. The performance is incredibly important. Yeah. But as much as everybody loves Whitney's uh, I Will Always Love You, that's Dolly's, Dolly's song. Dolly's yeah. Song. yeah. <laughs> She's very happy she sold it, too. Yeah. <laughs> you know the story about that with Elvis? Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, she just didn't want to sell it to that asshole. Yeah. The, you know. Well, he, he, uh, he uh, what's his name? Yeah. His manager yeah, yeah. said, uh, I hope you know, every song Elvis does, he owns the publishing. And she said, yeah, I did not know that. On the day they were going to record. She said, whoa, 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 whoa. No, we did not talk about that. And Colonel said, yeah, it was Colonel Tom. He said, oh, yeah, no, everything Elvis does, he owns the publishing. She said, I'm not giving up the publishing. He said, no, he's not singing it. Okay. <laughs> and she said, you know, she said no to Elvis Presley. Rightly so. Because yeah. she held on to that. But yeah, anyway. Good for her. Yep. Uh... Anyways, let us know your thoughts on this. Obviously. I'm sure you I'm sure have people already. People have, have a ton of thoughts on this. Probably better informed than we are, just because you probably yeah, know the industry. If better. you're in the industry, yeah, uh, I'm sure it's a I'm very, very pro union, uh, and I think that, that could actually change so much. It could. It, and I don't know how much unions. I doubt they're a big part of Indian culture. Um, just because of what I know of how Indians work, basically. And the laws are so different. When we yeah. form a union here in the United States, it has a whole different legal framework yeah and because of that that's why it works where you can't just tell india yeah make in this a union. yeah make a union in this because it's it's not going to work the same way constitutionally or from state to state yeah it's way more complicated but that kind of stuff really helps with a lot of this stuff um like a writer not being paid for a rewrite yeah wet. and and gives you standards and norms and minimums um yeah, I I also think some of these actors. One, I think it would help their careers. Um, I don't think it's a good look for Akshay. You know, he does four or five films a year, and f at least four of them are flops. I don't think that looks good on you, even though obviously, because um, I think he's a good artist. I think you'll make your brand better if you're like, I'm gonna take of course less and give it to the writer to make a great, compelling story. Of course. It's going to make your career take off because people will, the actors always get the credit. <laughs> if you're like, he was in this great, yeah, he loves picking great films. He, he's, he's really, you'll get the credit for the writing, even though you didn't. Do you know how record. happy you would make everybody too? When you're on set and the whole crew and everybody there knows that you are letting the wealth be shared amongst everybody there without denigrating. I mean, there's a percentage the star should get. Yeah. That's higher than a non-star without question. But uh, I don't. I, I, yeah, I agree it's with you. It's a complex issue. It's for complex. sure. But there, yeah, it's a very well-informed video. Uh, go check out our channel. I'll put it in the link in the description below so you can go check that out. Thank you for making. Josh.